How is going on everybody and welcome back to the CEO of our YouTube channel. Uh, Carlisle United 4 defeat uh, at home in a 3-1 game against Oxford. Oxford 3, Carlisle United 1. Um, a game with a lot of talking points um, and we're going to we're gonna go over them really in this video. But uh, five changes then for the team. Um, Harry Lewis coming in, Alfie McCarmont in the squad, Dan Butterworth getting the start and Mox and Jack Ellis coming back in from injury as well. Home debuts for Luke Armstrong and Harrison Neal, and the Carlisle United debut for Harry Lewis in goals. Um, now, there's a few talking points, um, and I'm sure they will continue over the weekend um, into next week with Carlisle fans. Uh, you know, where's Paul Huntington, Dylan McGee, Oxnard in the, in the squad type of... Uh, lots of questions about the team and everything. Now, a couple of things that I want to put forward... And this could just be for me, and of course this channel is opinion based on my opinion, I always listen to your guys' opinion though, and I'm always happy to interact with you guys on your opinion. But one thing that is, um, you know, irritating me in a way is our um, consistency on having a start and 11, our consistency of a formation. And it just at times doesn't feel like we have a game plan. Um, if I'm going to be honest, and you know, people might um, agree with me there or disagree with me. Of course, it, it's an opinion based thing, but I, I totally understand injuries play a part in what team you put out week in, week out. But I just don't think we have that consistent 11. You know, in, in my previews, we predict the lineup and it's, it's different every single week because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, for example, today. Um, I had, had Dylan McGeoch started in my prediction. Dylan McGeoch wasn't even in the squad. Um, and I seen him before the game and he, he, he didn't sound too happy about it when someone asked him, where's your boots? Um, and he said, I don't need them today. And then walked off. Didn't look very happy. Um, but he's, you know, he's, he, what we've seen of him so far, he seems a decent player if he's fit. Obviously, Paul Huntington um, is fit. Um, and he isn't getting in that starting position. Obviously, I, I understand Paul Simpson's point of view that he doesn't want to risk him too early and then he's injured for another three, four weeks. But, you know, an experienced player, uh, an experienced defender. But but for me, the thing that is sort of irritating me at the moment as well is the um, the formation thing. We, we start with a 5-3-2, which I think can work very effectively. Um, if you've got a, a, a back three and a goalkeeper that are comfortable with each other, it can absolutely work effectively. If your wing backs can get up and down the pitch, like we've seen that they can, you know, last season, you know, obviously we're playing harder opposition this year, I totally understand that. But, you know, uh, Jack Armour, Jack Ellis can get forward, Jack Robinson can get forward, Josh Emmanuel, to an extent, can get forward. Um, so you've got the players that can do the 5 five three two formation well. Um, what I like about the five three two formation is how you've got the the wingers like the right right wing back left wing back. You've got the two midfielders and you've got the centre attacking. Um, you've got the centre attacking midfielder with the two strikers up front. Now another point that I want to make is Luke Armstrong. I think Luke Armstrong in his first couple of games in the Carlisle show has been fantastic. Um, he looks a real handful, a real good striker, and, and one that we we definitely should be starting week in, week out, in my opinion. Um, but when we switch to the 4-3-3, which I, I, I'm not sure if we switched to the 4-3-3 directly after half-time or when they went 2-0 up. I'm not 100%, but we definitely switched to a 4-3-3. And Armstrong was a lone strike through the middle with no one to play off. And that affected his game, in my personal opinion. Now, it... it <clears throat> It, it's difficult because I thought Armstrong and Butterworth worked very well together in the first half. They had Alfie McCarmon just in behind him in the centre attack and midfield role. And they were quite well as a three. Dan Butterworth had a fantastic game as well, in my opinion. But then when we switched it up, we had Gibson on the wing with Armstrong and Alfie McCarmon on the wing. Now, Alfie McCarmon is not a winger. Not a chance is Alfie McCarmon a winger. Why he's playing on the right wing is completely beyond me. Um, especially when we're taking off Dan Butterworth, who, in my opinion, that was his best game in a Carlisle shirt. He, he, he was fantastic um, in, in that 60 minutes he played. In fact, he got my man of the match and he only played 60 minutes. I would have kept him on as well. But put Gibson on the right, Butterworth on the left, and then Armstrong in the middle. The, the Alfie McCarmel's not a winger. And I, I just feel like it, it's sort of a, a, a panic move. Now, obviously, Paul Simpson 
is a lot more knowledgeable about football than I am when it comes to management and when it comes to the team management and he knows these players better than I do and everything like that and I totally understand that but it feels like we, we start with a formation that works in the first half we were we were decent we you know we we genuinely outplayed Oxford in some parts of the pitch we didn't have the finishing touch but if we went into that at half time at nil nil and avoided the goal you know you would have been happy with it because we played well Obviously, that didn't happen, but we we had the five three two. It looked good. I thought Armstrong and Butworth looked really well together. Jack Ellis looked good. Jack Robinson looked great. Yes, we got caught out a couple of times with gaps and stuff, which is something I'll address in the moment. But then we we went two 0 down and we switched to a four three three. Mellish goes into the midfield. Um, you know, you've got Alfie McCallum on right wing and he's not a right winger. And all of a sudden, the game goes flat. I mean, their second goal obviously helped the game go flat. But it just went flat. The creativity went. Armstrong didn't have anyone to play off. Um, you know, Gibson looked really lively when he came on. But Alfie McCallum, again, I know we got a goal, but he's not a right winger. And uh, it just it, it annoys me with the the formation change a little bit. Because, as I say, Mellish started at centre-back. He moved into centre-mid. Then someone, then Taylor Charles came on and then Mellish moved straight back into, um, into centre-back. And it's just like we just, for me, I think we need a consistent eleven, a consistent bench, and stick to a formation that's going to work. You know, stick to a game plan and try and execute that game plan as best as possible. I totally understand if the games are going in your favour, you have to try and change something. I just feel like the four three three formation change feels a bit of a panic at the moment. That's just my opinion, though. What do you think of the formation? What What would you play? However. I do want to say, I know we're six and a half minutes into this video and I haven't really spoke about the game at all, but Paul Simpson is not immune to criticism, okay? Not a single person in the club is immune to criticism. And yes, sometimes his decisions can be frustrating. Sometimes you can question them decisions. For example, today, I don't know why Butterworth went off in the 60th minute, okay? But Paul Simpson is the man for this job, okay? That's not a debate, and I, I, it's really, it, it, it's it, some of the things you read on, like you know, on socials is, it's just a bit embarrassing in my opinion. Um, so yeah, shall we get into the game? You know, I, I've waffled for seven and a half minutes now, but let's get into the game, right? Okay, so very quick review of the game then. Um, although we started quite well, to be honest, I thought we we played very well for the first 10, 15 minutes. We. But in the first half, in general, we created a few opportunities. We didn't necessarily have, um, we didn't necessarily have a clear cut opportunity. Alfie McCarmont had a really good effort in the final. Um, was, I think it was like the last real attack of the half. To be honest, um, he's he's got the shot away and he took deflection off there, lad, and it went off for a corner, but inches off the post, really close to hitting the post. Um, and potentially going in, but really unlucky for McCarmont. Their goal comes off a corner, whether or not it's a corner, up to you guys. Um, I, I wasn't 100% sure, to be perfectly honest, um, so I'm not going to comment on whether it was or it wasn't. Um, but then it's poor defending that led to the goal. Their player's got uh, yards of space on, on, on the back post, and he's headed it back across, and it's went in the back of the net for 1 0. Went into half time though, and it's not it wasn't the worst result in the world going into half time. Um, I don't think we deserve to be one 0 down, to be totally honest. But you were hoping we were going to come out in the second half like we did against Paul Vale, you know, put put in a performance, off you go, and then within sort of four minutes of the second half, the game was flat because, um, I mean, on reflection, it looks tighter than it did on the day. There's pictures on your screen now, but. He's offside, isn't he? He's offside and he's went for one goal. You know, Lewis has came out. He's tried to get it. He's went round the keeper. He's put it in the back of the net. Um, lucky, mind, don't get me wrong. He, he nearly missed. He came out, he went off the post, but he went in the back of the net. And that was 2-0 and then the game just slumped from there. It felt like a really flat performance. Uh, the fans felt flat. And it, it just... You just didn't think we were getting back in the game at any point after that second goal, which is, you know, it, it's hard to say that when you're 50 minutes into the game and you've still got 40 minutes to play. But that's just how it felt, in my opinion. Then they scored the third, which I'll be completely honest, I completely missed it. I didn't see what happened, so I can't speak for the third goal. Um, I've, I've, I've watched a few videos and a few other content creators with Carl Island. 
you know, sort of saying that it, it, it looked a bit, um, uh, you know, a bit poor defending, but a good finish from their lad. But again, I didn't see it, so I can't fully comment. And Alfie McCarmon got one back. Um, some some good work from Jordan Gibson off the bench, um, and some excellent work as well from for Luke Armstrong as well to keep that attack alive. And then McCarmon with the finish. Uh, he doesn't score many for Carlisle, so uh, it was nice to see him score a goal, even though I still argue the fact that he's not a right winger. So let's not play him on the wing again, please. Um, but a, a finish from Alfie, He'd make a 3 1, but the game was already gone at that point, in my opinion. Um, Joe Garner had a really good opportunity again, some good work from Jordan Gibson, gets the ball across, and Joe Garner's shot. Great save from their goalkeeper. You would, you would maybe have liked um, you know, Joe Garner to play anywhere but at the keeper, but great save from their keeper, not not to take it away from him. And and that was the game, really. 3-1, not, not bucket sort to talk about in the game. I think it's just these little things, like the formation and players and stuff. But, you know... The, if we're going to look on the bright side, Harry Lewis had a good debut. I know he conceded three goals, but I think he had a good debut. Um, Harrison Neal looks a top player. Luke Armstrong looks a top player. And I think we are building you know, a team that, that has good players in it. Um, it's, it's just we need them to gel quickly. And we, we, we need goals quickly. We need to start picking up points very quickly. And... The next opportunity we have for that is Barnsley on Tuesday. So yeah, what do you guys think? Um, I'm sorry I've waffled for 12 minutes. That's, an, that, that's a really long video for me. Um, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you going to Barnsley uh, if you are safe travels down there? I did originally have Barnsley tickets, but unfortunately, the river being moved to a Tuesday night, um, I, I won't. <laughs> by, by the time we get down to, to Barnsley and come back home, um, it's not going to be the best. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be the best shape for work the next day. So, um, I unfortunately won't be at Barnsley. But if you are making the trip down there, safe travels, and the preview will be live later on today as well for that. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, I've been seeing you all for. Thank you so much for watching this video. Enjoy the clips. I'll see you in the next one. Nasties!